Chapter 7 Workers from the Ranks With intense interest, God is looking on this world. He has noted the capacity of human beings for service. Looking down the ages, he has counted his workers, both men and women, and has prepared the way before them, saying, I will send my messengers to them, and they shall see great light shining amid the darkness. One to the service of Christ, they will use their talents to the glory of my name. They will go forth to work for me with zeal and devotion. Through their efforts, the truth will appeal to thousands in a most forcible manner, and men spiritually blind will receive sight and will see of my salvation. Truth will be made so prominent that he who runs may read. Ways will be devised to reach hearts. Some of the methods used in this work will be different from the methods used in the past, but let no one, because of this, block the way by criticism. Those whom God chooses as workers are not always talented in the estimation of the world. Sometimes he selects unlearned men. To these he gives a special work. They reach a class to whom others could not obtain access. Opening the heart to the truth, they are made wise in and through Christ. Their lives inhale and exhale the fragrance of godliness. Their words are thoughtfully considered before they are spoken. They strive to promote the well-being of their fellow men. They take relief and happiness to the needy and distressed. They realize the necessity of ever remaining under God's training, that they may work in harmony with God's will. They study how best to follow the Savior's example of cross-bearing and self-denial. They are God's witnesses, revealing His compassion and love, and ascribing all the glory to Him whom they love and serve. Constantly they are learning of the great teacher, and constantly they reach higher degrees of excellence, yet all the time feeling a sense of their weakness and inefficiency. They are drawn upward by their strong, loving admiration for Christ. They practice His virtues, for their life is assimilated to His. Ever they move onward and upward, a blessing to the world and an honor to their Redeemer. Of them, Christ says in Matthew 5, 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Such workers are to be encouraged. Their work is done not to be seen of men, but to glorify God, and it will bear His inspection. The Lord brings these workers into connection with those of more marked ability to fill the gaps they leave. He is well pleased when they are appreciated, for they are links in His chain of service. Men who are self-important, who are filled with the thought of their own superior abilities, overlook these humble, contrite workers, but not for one moment does God lose sight of them. He marks all that they do to help those in need of help. In the heavenly courts, when the redeemed are gathered home, they will stand nearest the Son of God. They will shine brightly in the courts of the Lord, honored by Him because they have felt it an honor to minister to those for whom He gave His life. God will move upon men in humble positions to declare the message of present truth. Many such will be seen hastening hither and thither, constrained by the Spirit of God to give the light to those in darkness. The truth is as a fire in their bones, filling them with a burning desire to enlighten those who sit in darkness. Many, even among the uneducated, will proclaim the word of the Lord. Children will be impelled by the Holy Spirit to go forth to declare the message of heaven. The Spirit will be poured out upon those who yield to His promptings, casting off man's binding rules and cautious movements. They will join the army of the Lord. In the future, men in the common walks of life will be impressed by the Spirit of the Lord to leave their ordinary employment and go forth to proclaim the last message of mercy. 
as rapidly as possible they are to be prepared for labor, that success may crown their efforts. They cooperate with heavenly agencies, for they are willing to spend and be spent in the service of the Master. No one is authorized to hinder these workers. They are to be bidden Godspeed as they go forth to fulfill the Great Commission. No taunting word is to be spoken of them as in the rough places of the earth they sow the gospel seed. Life's best things, simplicity, honesty, truthfulness, purity, unsullied integrity, cannot be bought or sold. They are as free to the ignorant as to the educated, to the black man as to the white man, to the humble peasant as to the king upon his throne. Humble workers who do not trust in their own strength, but who labor in simplicity, trusting always in God, will share in the joy of the Savior. Their persevering prayers will bring souls to the cross. In cooperation with their self-sacrificing efforts, Jesus will move upon hearts, working miracles in the conversion of souls. Men and women will be gathered into church fellowship. Meeting houses will be built and schools established. The hearts of the workers will be filled with joy as they see the salvation of God. When the redeemed stand in the presence of God, they will see how short-sighted were their conclusions as to what heaven records as success. As they review their efforts to achieve success, they will see how foolish were their plans, how petty their supposed trials, how unreasonable their doubts. They will see how often they brought failure to their work by not taking God at His word. And one truth will stand out in clear lines, that position does not prepare a man for entrance into the heavenly courts. They will see, too, that the honor given to man is due to God alone, that to him belongs all the glory. From the lips of the angelic choir and the redeemed host will peal forth the chorus, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art only holy. Revelation 15, 3 and 4.